in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if I was to preach on today, I would be talking about fighting the fear. Fighting amen. the fear. Amen. And we're going to go into the word on this morning. And we're in 2 Timothy, amen. And this is Paul that is speaking. And uh, he, he announces himself, praise God. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. This is 2 Timothy, uh, starting right at the beginning. So Paul was announcing himself and saying who he was an apostle of. Jesus had, had made him an apostle, amen. And two, um, going right into the second verse here. Um, I'm just going to mute a little bit. Y'all y'all bear with me, amen. Um, he says, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, yes. mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he began to talk yeah. to Timothy in family terms, amen. Remember, Paul was locked up and he was locked up in his second time being locked up in Rome. But Paul had a, uh, he was the apostle and he had a, a shepherding heart where when he got locked up, he just kept writing letters to the churches. He was just uh, reaching out to the different ones that had been named pastors and those who were growing into a, apostleship. And he began to share with them what they needed to do. So he started talking to Timothy and he said, my dearly beloved son, grace, right. mercy, and peace. He greeted him with grace, which is unmerited favor, mercy, which is only given, you know, given from God and peace from God, our father. So he was beginning, he was mentoring him even through the letters, amen. Three says, I thank God whom I serve, serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. So Paul was letting him know he was praying night and day for them that were left behind, amen. He says, greatly desiring to thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I might be filled with joy. See, Paul had to go away and he was, he was teaching them along the way. We know we're, we're in Acts and our Bible study. So we know that, that Paul had went through many things. And yeah. as he was teaching them and he had to go away, it looks like Timothy was crying because he had to go away. So he remembered the tears that he had. And that, that signifies a bond that they had. We heard Evangelist Janice mm -hmm. talk about the late founder and it was, there was something in her voice you know, there was something in her voice that was talking about the bond that she had. You know, when you when you bond with a leader, when you bond with a, a pastor or an apostle or someone who has a, a mentor, mentee relationship, when they go away, there there's a, a, a tear that will come. You know, there's something in your heart becomes ripped. Amen. So Timothy was behind and he had to keep on going on with the works of the Lord. So Paul was was commending him and he was letting him know that he was filled with joy. Five says, when I call to remembrance the unfeen faith, he's talking about genuine faith here, which dealt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. So here he began to reveal who Timothy was. Timothy was a church child, amen. He was somebody who had gotten brought up and the faith of his mother and his grandmother had, had uh, infiltrated him. Amen. Now we know that we want our young people to get our, their own walk with the Lord, but it starts out first with what we do as mothers and grandmothers and fathers. Amen. And, you know, as we, yeah. we begin to read this, we see that Timothy, who was now under Paul, that was leading a body of Christ, he had an unseen faith. You know, that faith started. And that's why I, I, I share with those of you who have children, don't be afraid you know, to stop and pray with them. You know, don't, don't be afraid to, to give them what thus says the Lord. You know, there's a, there's yes. a new train of thought out there, amen, is, oh, I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let my children choose their own thing. Anybody ever heard that, praise God? <laughs> there's, there's some new things out there. I'm gonna let them, you know, have their own freedom and, you know, whatever they, yes, the children will choose in, inevitably what it is that they decide. But if you plant the seed, 
the seed will spring up and it will grow into a good fruit. Amen. And, I, and Timothy was, he had some seeds that was planted in him. And, and when he began to go towards the Lord, he went towards the Lord with that that he had already seen. So you, you grandmothers that are out there, you mothers that are out there, you, you parents that are, take some time with the children. Don't let what's politically correct and, and what people are telling you, oh, you know, if they, if they say that they, they're gay, you can't mess with them, the blood of Jesus. We wanna take a look at what the word is saying. This scripture is letting us know that they poured into Timothy. They let him know what his life should be like according to the word of God. And because of this, he was able to, to, to go forward, amen. So he was going forward in the faith and we wanna be very careful as saints of God. And I don't say this carefully, amen. We want to pour into these children. We wanna have scripture time with them. You know, we wanna have time and study with them. Talk to them about the goodness of the Lord. Because when you say it to them, you are as God in their life until they meet God. They, they listen to you, amen. They look up to you. You know, these children, you, sometimes we will be the only God that they know in their life until God himself reveals himself unto them. So I am encouraging you on today. Don't be afraid to do that, amen. And some of us, you know, we get afraid because, you know, somebody gets on the TV and they tell us not to do that. Get in your word. Stay in your Bible, amen. So we see the example here. Number six says, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. So he was bringing him back to, as he was um, mentoring him, as he was training him, praise God. He had laid hands on him. Laying of hands, amen, um, was some received the power of the Holy Ghost through the laying of hands. Some imparting of gifts happen by the laying of hands. So he said, I'm going to remember the stirring up of the gift of God that is on the inside of you. So Timothy had been ordained, amen. The laying of hands had happened, amen. And, and it was gifts inside of him that needed to come full, amen. But he started to talk to him and it was a reason he was talking to him. Seven says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and when I read, you know, I don't like to cherry pick a scripture, amen, because we can read just seven, and we can take seven and preach a whole sermon, but without knowing what the, the essence of the scripture is, he was talking to his son. He was talking to a son in the ministry, and he was letting him know, remember the faith that was poured into you in the beginning. Remember the, the, the things that, that God has already done for you through your mother and your grandmother. Now, remember when you, you got your own walk with the Lord, and the laying of hands was put upon you, and, and God himself became a part of you through the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's telling him, you do not have to fear. The spirit of fear is not from God, amen, but power, love, and a sound mind. He was reminding him. Sometimes we need to be reminded, amen. So you start thinking about Timothy and Timothy was, he was leading a flock, amen. He had a, a people that he was working with. And he had to not only have a shepherd heart because it's good to have a shepherd's heart, which is caring and loving and being able to see after the people. But there is a boldness that comes through the Holy Ghost that will help you to protect the flock. You can't just allow people to just go any old direction, praise God. But there is a, a boldness that God will put upon the leadership to say, uh-uh, that's not what it says. Oh, no, don't you go that direction. Oh, no, we're not doing that because the word says amen. And there's a courage that has to come. So you think he was, he was talking to him, amen. So why would he be saying to him, God has not given us the spirit of fear? Because everybody deals with fear. So even though Timothy was a, a, a leader, amen, and Timothy was above the people, amen, he still had some fear. Timothy, the fear that he had in him, Paul could talk to him because Paul being human and not only divine, he could tell him, we all have this fear, but know that this fear is not of God. So he began to share with him, amen. And I'm gonna share with you on today that as fear comes to you, you have to talk to that fear and say, God has not given this to me. God does not give us fear. 
when we face situations, some of us may be a, a little timid than others, you know, and, and, and some of it's just human nature. You know, some of it's uh, how your ecosystem was. You know, if you grew up in a, in a household and, and your mother very, very rarely spoke up for herself or your father was a very quiet person, you may not walk with a loud voice, amen. Sometimes, you know, our ecosystem, it's not always demonic, amen. Sometimes it's just our personality. You know, some people are just, a, you know, a little bit more quiet or a little timid. But he's saying here that God hasn't given us fear. So don't let that quietness, don't let that envelop, develop into to a fear, amen. Because you're going to face situations and you're going to get a little afraid. You know, sometimes you're going to need to have a confrontation. Confrontation is a part of building relationships. It's a part of being yeah. on a job. It's a part of, you know, being in a family. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're, just going, you're just going to go through it. Amen. Yeah. But don't be afraid because the scripture yeah. says that God has not given us the yeah. spirit of fear. If your fear is coming upon you, it's not God. We need to know that it's not God. Either it's our flesh from our ego system. You know, just our regular everyday, what we've learned how to be, you know, or it could be a demonic attack where we're getting ready to do something great for the Lord. Timothy was doing great things for the Lord and a fear was coming upon him. So when that fear comes, first we have to uh, we have to look at that fear and say, what is this? You know, when things come up against us, amen, we don't take them lying down. Amen. You know, when, when things start happening, we want to look at it and begin to analyze that thing in the word of God. God says that he has not given it to us. That means that, well, if God didn't give it to me, where is it coming from? You know, there, there's a great fear even going through the land right now because, because of what? Because of the pandemic. Amen. Some of us are careful and some of us are in fear. Some of us are in fear that when the second wave comes through, that we don't want to be snatched up in that second wave. But when you were in the first wave, hallelujah, what did you do? You begin to cover yourself, amen. You cover yourself in prayer. You were very careful and cautious, amen. You did the things that wisdom told you to do. And you begin to just, just move forward in the earth like this is your father's house. So when we start to walk in, 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 in wisdom, fear and wisdom are two opposite things, amen. So we begin yeah. to walk forward, you know, just e even in the things of life. And we start saying, you know what, this is going on all around me, but I'm not going to walk in fear. God has not given me fear. He has given me wisdom. So I know when to go. I know how long to stay. I know how close to get praise God, but I am not going to walk in fear. Amen. We're not going to be in fear that, that we're going to contract this thing. We're not going to be in fear that we can't go out of the house and we begin to conceal ourselves. The spirit of the Lord is saying that it is okay. Amen. For us to move forward as the people of God. Amen. Because God has the blood on our doorposts. Amen. God, has the, the, the door and he's just covering us amen it's important for us to know that fear comes in sneaky forms amen it comes in sneaky forms sometimes we don't even realize that it's fear sometimes we think that you know oh oh well, this is you know we, we are not to do this but where what is the root of the reason why you're not doing what you're doing amen so amen we just know god has not given us the spirit of fear so when you're, you're going throughout your life, amen, and you might be on the job or you may be coming against things with the family or with the children, amen. Last week we said, are you the one? Yes, you're the one. God has chosen you for such a time as this. As you go through, just know that if fear begins to spring up inside of you, start talking to it. Start talking to that fear. Start speaking out loud to that fear and saying that God has not given this to me. And then when I start getting, you know, that fear, I'm going to say out loud, this is not from my father. I'm going to walk in this world and I'm going to know that God is going to protect me and God is watching over my family. I'm going to put my, my oil over everything that I need to praise God. And I'm going to begin to walk forward in this world free. Amen. We, we are not to be in anxiety. Amen. Scripture says, be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to move on with the scripture. Amen. And um, so we know that was Timothy. And we're going to go on over to Proverbs 18. Amen. We get into Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18 and 4 says, The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, 
and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. So we start talking about fear. Fear can come from the words of your own mouth. We have to be careful what we say out of our mouth. The idea is in this scripture is not that everyone's speech is deep and meaningful. Amen. It's saying here that, that, that we reveal the depths of our heart by the words of our mouth. What comes out of our mouth is coming out of our heart. Six says, and a fool's lips enter into con contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. It's our nature to be foolish, amen. It's our nature to be in contention. But when we come into the Lord, amen, we begin to say declaration. This is my father's house. God is protecting me. He is watching over me. God has not given me the spirit of fear. You begin to find yourself buried in the word of God. And the word of God says that God is forever our protector. Amen. He says that he is our refuge in the time of storm. Amen. So we're going through things. Amen. And, and fear is rising up. Don't let your mouth help you and be a snare unto you in the middle of what you're going through. Our tongue, amen. We want to be careful with our tongue, amen. Be careful what you speak out of your mouth. You know, and yeah. we, we go right into the next scripture, amen. This one is very familiar. Psalms 19 and 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, when we're analyzing situations, amen, and we start to look at what's going on around us, we ought to take scripture and let scripture be our guide. Lord, let the words of my mouth. God, I'm not going to say anything out of my mouth because my words are as God's words. Amen. Our words are powerful. So if we begin to, to speak a thing and that thing uh, uh, starts to manifest, you know, some of us, some of us mess up just by saying simple things like uh, uh, the devil, the devil is uh, in control. The devil is, you know, the devil's messing with me. The blood of Jesus. Because the devil is a defeated foe. You know, we'll blame the devil for everything. But we have to be careful about what comes out of our mouth. We want our mouths to be, to, to, to have nothing but the, the glory of God inside of them. Amen. Even when you don't feel it, amen, we ought to be able to look at the scripture and say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you and out of my mouth will come your word. Our God, I will allow, allow my spirit to line up with the word of God. The word of God says that, God, that you are a refuge in the time of storm. Amen. The word of God says that, God, that if I, if I mourn, God, that I will be comforted. God has the word as a, a, a lamp. He is just lighting our feet and our pathways. Amen. We have to take the word and let the word be the thing that comes out of our mouth. Amen. And it says, and the meditation of my heart. The medit that means that you're taking some time to, to sit in the presence of the Lord. Meditation is quiet time. Meditation is when you start to ponder and you start to look and say, God, I just want to be closer to you. Meditation is that time that you take out with God. And it says, be acceptable in thy sight. That means God sees everything that we are doing. God knows when you are, are, are murmuring and, and complaining and, and, and you're putting words out there. Because the thing that I think that sometimes we don't realize is that our words have so much power. One scripture says that there is death and life in the power of our tongue. So when we start to speak a thing, we put it into motion. Our tongue as a human believer, amen, it starts to put things into motion. So if you start speaking over things, just know it's like, like an angel grabs your words and things start going into motion. So if what you're saying is a negative thing, my God, my God, if you start saying a negative thing, you could be putting things into motion against what it is that you want. So I'm here to tell you today, I want you to begin to say out of your mouth the things that you want not the things that you don't want. That is how you will begin to achieve excellence, amen. When you begin to, to come against the things that the flesh are saying, amen. The flesh, you might look at something and they used to say, well, if it's a duck, call it a duck, praise God. But that is a secular saying, amen. We wanna look at a duck and we wanna start calling it blessed. We wanna start looking at a situation and saying, oh, this looks like this is gonna be trouble. No, we wanna look at this thing and say that, all things work for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. This is going to work out for my favor. 
no matter how it looks, no matter how it sounds, no matter how it feels, amen, you begin to look at a thing and you start to speak the word of God to it. And God will meet you in that. And you will begin to see a release and an ability that only your mouth and God's ears can function within the earth, amen. Amen. So we just thank God. We do not want to walk in fear. We want to release only the word of God out of our mouth. And, and somebody might say, oh, well, that's impossible. That's impossible. You know what? Practice makes perfection. The more you get in the word of God and the more you, you guard your mouth and you begin to sit and meditate and, and you catch yourself and you, you get ready to say something that's negative, replace that with the word of God. It may take you some time. It might be progressive, but let it be so. Because the scripture says that he that comes into Christ is a new creature. Behold, all old things are passed away and, and, and everything becomes new. Amen. So if you're used to talking negative, you're used to always being the negative Nancy in the group. I, I, I am just encouraging you on today to begin to speak the word of God over your situation. Begin to speak that thing. Start looking at it differently. And start looking at it yeah. then. You know what? God knew me while I was in my mother's womb, as he said in Jeremiah. God has blessings for me and not cursings. You begin to look at Deuteronomy. I'm blessed when I go in and I'm blessed when I come out. And you begin to declare this in the midst of your trial. Amen. We want to walk in faith and not fear. Amen. Because you're going to come up against some fear. Look at this leader that was coming up again. Timothy was a leader. He was someone who had people under him. And I'm, I, all human nature is going to have some fear and we're going to have it come up against us. But when it comes, it's how you deal with it. It's how you become victorious. Amen. So I'm encouraging you on today. Amen. To use the word of God. God gave us the word for a reason. He gave us the word so that the word of God will become a part of us. He said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. Amen. So I hope you've gotten something out of the word of God. I'm encouraging yeah. all of you on today to speak out of your mouth the things that you desire, not the things yeah. that you don't desire. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll talk all about what we don't want. Anybody ever experienced that, amen? We talk all, oh, I, well, I, I don't want this to happen. And I, I, I don't want that. Don't talk about that. Talk about what you want to happen, amen. Wow. If you have children in the house, amen, and the children are going in the wrong direction, you begin to look at those children. And you start saying, my children are blessed of the Lord. God, I just thank you that, that their, their, their feet are going towards you, God. Father, I, I declare over their lives, God, that you knew them while they were in the womb. You're going to see some other things. It's not going to look like the thing that you are declaring, but that is where Christianity comes in at. Remember, faith cometh by hearing. You know, faith is an unseen thing. So if we go by what we see, and then how are we any different than those that are in the world? See, we are different, and our difference is our faith, because faith is an unseen thing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We, we look at oh. Hebrews 11. He says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of unseen things. Amen. That means that you can't see it working out. Amen. That means that you don't know that it's going to work out. But all you know is that the word of God says that he is sure. And that God is in your corner. Amen. God is saying that you are my child and everything in your path is going to work out. God is saying that I'm, I'm looking at you and I have already written the story. That I know the end before the beginning. So we ought to be able to walk around and say that my father has already prepared a thing for me. Amen. It might not look like I'm coming out. But out of my mouth, I'm going to begin to speak the word of God. And the word of God is going to be a lamp unto my feet. And I'm going to walk towards the things of God. Amen. I'm going to begin to walk with my head held up high. Amen. God is going to be my comforter in the days of trouble. Amen. So when, when these things start happening, amen, you, you ought to be able to grab a song. Amen. When situations start occurring and they don't look like what the word says, you got to just wait on it. And, and, and to begin to look at that thing and say, God, I know that you're never going to leave me or forsake me. Amen. You said that you'll never leave me and you'll never forsake me. God, you said yeah. that you are a healer, God. Father, you are the God that healeth thee. You could be in the midst of sickness. Amen. Sickness might yeah. have overtaken your body, but I'm here to tell you to begin to speak out loud. 
God, you are my healer. You are my refuge. And I believe that you are the yes. God that healeth me. You got to speak against that thing. You start seeing your finances going down. Lord, I paid my tithes, God. Lord, you said yeah. that you would open up the windows of heaven and you will just pour out a blessing. God, I'm looking for my blessing. God, I'm going to walk to the mailbox every day looking for the checks that are going to begin to roll in. I'm not going to pay attention to all the things that are around me like Peter did when he began to walk on that water. But God, I'm not looking at the raging sea, but I'm looking at you, God. Your word says that you, you are the, the, the lamp unto my feet. The word of God is here for us. Amen. Let us be encouraged on today. Let us look yeah. and know that it is the word of God that we want to listen to. Amen. You know, we, you know, we, sometimes we get Those so into the what they say on the news, praise God. Sometimes yes, we get so you. enveloped in the reports, Lord, amen. amen. We get Lord, so enveloped in the science of a thing, amen. I know a God that is bigger than all of that, amen. I know a God that can, he can destroy something with just a, a, a finger, amen. The scripture says with the finger of God. All God has to do is decide that it's over and it's over. So we have to apply the faith to it, amen. So I encourage all of you on today. I'm encouraging amen. you that if fear is creeping up on you, that you begin to talk to that fear and tell it it has no place in your life. Fear, I, I, I know that you're talking to me, but I'm not listening to you. I'm zoning you out and I'm going to pour the word of God into my, my spirit. And the word of God is going to be the thing that I believe. And not only will I believe it, but I'm going to speak it. And if we begin to do that, amen, we're going to see great things in our lives, amen. So I'm encouraging you to do that. And, you know, we're going into different phases, amen. We're going into different phases. And we don't want to begin to speak the yes, thing that yes, we don't want. We don't want to start speaking what we don't want. Let's start speaking that we are going to walk into the next phase of this pandemic glorious. That God is going to give us some wisdom. God is going to give us the instruction, amen. He's going to protect us as the people of God, just like he said he would, amen. They, they, what did he do? He put the blood over the doorposts, and they stayed in for a little while. But they didn't stay in there indefinitely, amen. Noah went into the ark, amen, and he went into the ark. And what happened? After a while, what did he do? He sent a little birdie out. And the birdie came back, amen. And then he sent the bird back out again, and he knew that it was it was good ground, amen. And it was time to begin to go out and trust the Lord. If Noah would have never came out of the ark, oh, my God. So we begin to look at this thing and say, Lord, give us the wisdom. God, give us the instruction, amen. And as we begin to enter back in, amen, Lord, just, just lead and guide us and let our mouths, amen, speak what it is that we want. Amen. And not the thing that we Amen. don't want. So I hope you got something out of the word of God on today. Amen. And um, oh. we just thank God for the word on today. And we're going we're gonna to just say a prayer. Amen. Closing out for those who, who may be in fear. Amen. For those who, who may be very timid about, you know, what is going on yes. around them. Amen. It's not just a pandemic. You know, there was a 14-year-old girl found floating in the river in, in, in Linden, New Jersey. 14 years old found floating in the there's more going on in this earth than this pandemic amen there are i mean they found a, a dead body in arthur kill yesterday praise god somebody is out you know who it is the enemy is out and he is lurking to see who he might devour and while we are in hiding amen people need our help amen people need us to reach out to them and stay in yeah, connection with them you. and Lord, pray with Lord. them and to be the hands and the arms of amen. god thank and you. some of us are in fear god is saying that i am with you always god is with us amen so we just yeah, want to say a prayer amen father in the Lord. name of jesus thank father we god. just thank you lord god that this word is coming thank from you. your mouth god to our ears Father, we receive your word, Lord Jesus. Thank Father, we're asking for wisdom to come upon us, Lord God. Father, as we move forth in the great commission, Lord yes. Jesus. Father, we're not, we're not looking just at this pandemic, God. Father, you left us with a mission, and this great commission, yes. God, is that we go out and we begin to make disciples, Lord God. Father, we begin to just pour into Thank people you. and love yes. on people, Lord Jesus. Father, I'm just coming against this fear, Lord God, the fear that is all over the land, Lord God. People that are afraid to even go to a normal places, God. Father, we just release them from the fear in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we come against this fear and we say that it's not from you, Lord God. Father, we come against the fear if it's fear in our personalities. Father, if it's fear in our upbringing. Father, if it's fear and we're masking it and saying that it is you, God. Father, that we begin to hear the voice of you, God. Father, that you begin to bring forth your voice. Father, you said in your word in Amos, God, that, Father, that you would speak first to the prophets, God, that you would do nothing until you revealed it to your servants, the prophets. God, we just are looking for your voice on today, Lord God. Father, we thank you for the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of God. Father, the only thing that we will fear will be you, God. Father, we yes. just thank you. Father, we just lean into you, God, daily for your guidance. Father, we begin to lean into you, God, daily for your wisdom, oh God. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you for it, Lord God. Father, that you begin to release us from every fear, God. Fear of, 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 of moving forward in life, God. Fear of, of, of having lack of finances. Fear of, of losing jobs and fear of just fear that just begins to overtake our children. Father, just every fear, we just come against it and we break it by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you that if your blood can cover our sins, God. Father, if your blood, Lord God, if it can raise us from the dead out of our sin into righteousness, God. Father, we trust you that your blood will be able to carry us through every pandemic, no matter what rises up, oh God. Father, we thank you that your blood will begin to cover, Father, these children that are being killed. Father, we come against this in the name of Jesus. Father, we just cover these families on today, Lord God. Father, we cover these families, Lord God, that they will begin to turn to you for comfort. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this is the day that you have made, Father, and that we will rejoice in it and be glad. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just rejoice and we are glad in it, God. Father, we just thank you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm just, um, we're praying. Amen. We